That's all yours. Hello, everyone. You all have a great weekend. Good Thanksgiving. Yeah. All right. Well, my name is Josh Phillips, and today I'd like to talk to you about the evolution of the mobile phone. Now, starting right off the bat, can anyone tell me what the first mobile phone available in the consumer market was? Anyone? That title belongs to the Dynatac 8000X. <laughs> While it may be considered unwieldy by modern standards, at the time it was considered revolutionary because mobile telephones were bulky affairs that were installed in cars or in some sort of briefcase. The Dynatac 8000X was truly the first mobile telephone to be able to operate without the assistance of a mobile operator to be carried out by the user. And this is affectionately known as the brick with the original price tag of 4000 was no easy thing to obtain. In fact, I have a little video to demonstrate the use of this phone. Those who think getting a car phone is not for them, whatever the reason, haven't kept up with the booming industry of cellular radio telephones. Seems like this are becoming commonplace in U.S. cities where cellular is available today. This revolution in communications could make it possible for more and more people to have a phone in their car or even one that travels with you. Like this unique cellular portable made by Motorola, which weighs only 30 ounces. Right now, businessmen and women are major users of radio telephones where cellular is in service. But more people will take advantage of cellular as its benefits become apparent. Eventually, seeing people using cellular phones may seem as commonplace as someone checking time on an electronic watch, figuring on an electronic calculator, or programming on an electronic computer. Industry watchers say there are only a few thousand cellular phones in use right now, but that number is expected to grow considerably within the next few years during the cellular revolution. Did you guys see that thing? It was massive. Can you imagine carrying around that thing? Four pounds on the side of your head. It was heavy. <laughs> yeah, it was. So Motorola had to come up with an idea to make it easier to use for the consumer. So that's whenever they release the Microtech, the first flip phone, flip phone. I don't have the exact model right here because it's pretty ancient, but everyone's familiar with the flip phone, right? It uses the form factor adapted by StarTech. It was the first pocket cell phone available to consumers, and the smallest available when released. We're moving on to the Nokia 3210 which, for most people, was the first phone they ever got. Um, I don't have the exact phone, but I have the one right before it. And the interesting thing about this phone was you could remove the faceplate and replace it, which was pretty cool at the time. There wasn't a lot of customizability options. And also, it's built like a rock. That thing probably still works. I don't know, I tested it. It was also the first phone to tuck the big antenna that you had to pull out of a phone to use it into it. It was also the first one to use the candy bar form factor. So now we move on to the first touchscreen phone. Now, keep in mind, it wasn't as advanced as today's touchscreen technology, but it still was pretty cool. I mean, you see someone walking around in the year 2000 with a stylus on their phone, just like, yeah, I'm just um, calling people, sending text messages. They're like, whoa, that's awesome. I mean, today it's nothing. We have microcomputers in our hands nowadays. But at the time, this simple black and white phone from Motorola, which were the pioneers of the cell phone age, seemed to. Oh, I can't All right, the Kirsia 6035. This was the first smartphone on the market. Well, smart by their standards. And what made it smart was it was able to connect to uh, IP-based applications and use stuff like email, which at the time had never been heard of. To be able to send someone an email with your phone, that was absolutely just preposterous to even think about that. It also could be used as a modem for a computer, which I thought was very interesting. It's not even enough, like a lot of phones out there that can do that now. So then we move on to the BlackBerry. The first phone with a QWERTY keyboard that everyone's so familiar with when they're typing their little text messages. I'm sure all of you use like swipe or something weird now. 
It made web browsing, emails, and SMS a lot easier to the user instead of having to, I'm sure we've all had that moment where we're like, okay, I'm going to send this message, it's going to say hi. One, two, one, two, three. Period. Anyone remember that? It took forever. And now, a razor. Now, how many of you actually had a razor back in the day? This thing was the coolest thing ever, was it not? I could sit here and say, all right, I'm going to take a video of you, and I'm going to post that video online, or I'm going to send it to someone. It was really cool, to say the least. It was also the first phone to have a, what was called, a selfie camera, where you have a little camera in the front, and you can take pictures of yourself. Yeah, I'm sure we're all familiar with that. Anyway, um, you can pass this around. Everyone take a look at it. Get your mitts on it, feel it up. Now, we gotta think, this has gotta be like just the most advanced that smartphones can get to, or even not smartphones really yet, but phones can even achieve. <coughs> this is it, this is the pinnacle of technology, right? Wrong. Apple released the iPhone in 2007, which was the first smartphone. It was crazy. You could have a phone, a text messenger, an email, a PDA, a stopwatch, flashlight, anything you want, you could probably get it on this phone. It was so amazing that the tech community referred to it as the Jesus phone. So while Apple was at the top of their game, they were saying, we've got the most advanced phone. We are going to control the cell phone market from here on out. No one can compete with us. And then the pioneers of the original smartphone decided, you know what? We could do better. We could beat them. Someone hit the lights, please. Hit the lights. Now, Google had this in response to Apple's iPhone. And 
for all of you who are very familiar with Linux, it was basically the Linux of cell phones. So that means it was open source, you could make your own apps for it. It wasn't all proprietary, just like Apple. The Samsung Galaxy. Still a very popular brand today. It was uh, Samsung's entry into the ring of smartphones. It featured Android OS 1.6, and it started the revolution for the Samsung phones, which now Samsung's near the top of the chain there. It really made Samsung a huge player in the cell phone market today. Now, the Motorola Electrify, which I have right here, it was pretty cool because uh, this was actually the first phone with a dual-core processor. Now, you go back in time, say like 10 years, and say, hey, there's going to be a phone about, as about more powerful as that computer you have right there. they look at you like you're crazy. But as we all know, technology has nowhere to go but up. This is the Ativa S, the first phone to use Windows Phone 8. Now, it wasn't really that game-changing. It was just Microsoft's first attempt into the cell phone market, partnered with Samsung. It featured a 1.5 dual-core uh, processor, and it was able to synchronize with your Microsoft computer to make uh, integrated applications just a little easier. It came stock with uh, Office and all those fun little Microsoft apps that we all pay like $200 a piece for. So this was pretty nice. 2013 is when smartphones really started to take off. We started seeing stuff like the, the new iPhones, the Samsung Galaxies, stuff that, um, really, the Samsung Galaxy S4 was my first smartphone, and once you get a smartphone, it's really, really hard to go back to a normal one. But it featured things like um, 1080p uh, picture display, uh, fingerprint readers, just and really slim form factors that we were not used to whatsoever. So what's new? What's next for the cell phone revolution? Already there's concepts of, there's eye scanners, there's bendable phones, there's transparent phones, there's stuff that you think you'd see in like science fiction movie. I've been looking at, it'd be really interesting to look into this stuff yourself too. You can find some stuff you never thought would be possible like a block of glass that is a phone. Anyway, that'll do it for my presentation. My name is Josh Phillips, and I hope you enjoyed it. Do uh, anyone have any questions? Anything about phones or their place in history? Uh, do you know of the uh, revolutions coming up in the wearable cellular technology? Yes. Um, recently, Samsung has revealed and released the Samsung Galaxy um, Gear X. And what that is, is it's its own phone in a watch form. You could sync it up to your phone, use the SIM card in it, and just go running. And what's around your wrist, that's your phone. And there's three more wearables that are going to be released next year by Samsung alone. Not to mention there's the iWatch from Apple and the Sony SmartWatch 4. So it's going to make a big place here soon. Does anyone have any more questions? All right, I'll do it. <laughs>